Hello, friends, it's Mr. Jim, and welcome back to Kid Short Stories. I have been getting a lot of questions recently about merch or t shirts or stuff like that. And so, if you go over to heymrjim.com, we have a whole bunch of kid short stories or kids' animal stories merch that you should definitely check out today. Well, today's story is part two of Joseph's crazy adventure. He's just somehow created a ginormous fly. What is going to happen? Are you ready for today's story? Me too. Let's go. As Joseph was standing there with his back to the basement door, he could feel the giant fly on the other side trying to push his way out. I've got to call this into HQ. I'm definitely going to need backup on this one. But my walkie is all the way upstairs, said Joseph. Oh dear, how am I going to keep this fly down there? I can't let him get out into my house. He would destroy everything. He's got a pretty good point. That fly is ginormous and would definitely make an even bigger mess than that cupcake did in his kitchen. All right, got to find a way to maybe wedge this door shut. Uh, There, I'll grab a chair. He was able to reach a chair just barely, and then he wedged it underneath the doorknob to the basement door. All right, this should hold for now. He could still hear the buzzing on the other side of the door. He raced upstairs as fast as he could. He had to get all of his spy gear, but especially his walkie-talkie so that he could call it an HQ. Shh, HQ, come in. This is Joseph. Something crazy has happened. Over. Shh. Hey, Joseph, this is HQ. So, uh, what's going on? How's your experiment going with the Magna Hoop? Shh. Oh, it's going, uh, I guess you could say it's going well. It's working but a fly accidentally flew in through the magna hoop and now it's the size of a buffalo. Did you say a fly is now the size of a buffalo? Over? Yes, that is exactly what I just said. He's, uh, I have him locked in my basement right now, but I think he could break down the door. He's huge. All right, well, thank you for letting us know. We'll make sure that backup gets to your house as soon as possible. Just make sure that you do not let that fly outside, because if it gets out there, who knows what kind of damage it could cause. Over. Just then, he heard a loud noise. It sounded like the chair fell over. As he raced down the stairs as fast as he could, it was too late. The front door had somehow been opened, and the fly was gone. Dun, dun, dun! Joseph ran outside and looked up in the sky. He couldn't see anything. That means the fly is on the move. Oh, dear. As Joseph ran around his yard, he even looked over at his neighbor's house, the Wilsons. Hey, Mr. Wilson, said Joseph. Have you happened to have seen a flying, uh, like something really large flying? Oh, hey, Joseph. No, I haven't seen anything. What do you what do you mean fly like a large flying thing like a airplane? No, more like a flying buffalo. <laughs> oh, Joseph, you're hilarious," said Mr. Wilson. He was grilling in his backyard, and it smelled delicious. But Joseph, he was very worried about that giant fly that was now on the loose. He knew that he had to run back inside to let HQ know that that fly was now on the loose. So as he was heading back inside, he all of a sudden heard Mr. Wilson screaming, "Ah! Joseph, help me! Mr. Wilson was screaming for his life and Joseph started running back to where he was. As he peeked his eyes over the fence, There was the fly trying to eat Mr. Wilson's food. Ah, Mr. Wilson, that's what I was talking about. Run! And before Mr. Wilson was able to run for his life, he slipped right in the grass. Splat! He landed right on his back, and he put his hands up over his face. 
His hands smelled and tasted just like all that food. So the giant fly came over and stood on top of Mr. Wilson and started to lick at his hands. <coughs> ah, it's going to eat me, cried Mr. Wilson. Joseph had to act fast. He remembered that there was some long rope in his garage. Maybe he could make a lasso and try and catch the fly and, you know, tie him to a tree or something. He raced over to his garage as fast as he could, and there it was. It was a long piece of rope that he knew exactly how to tie into a lasso. He had done some lassoing practice before on some old tree stumps in the backyard, so he was basically a pro. Joseph grabbed the rope and ran back towards Mr. Wilson, who had now passed out from being absolutely terrified of that giant buffalo fly. Mr. Wilson, it's going to be okay, shouted Joseph. As he swung the rope over his head, he threw the rope and it landed right over the fly's head, who reared back and forth and tried to fly away. Joseph started to raise off the ground, holding onto the rope. Ah! <laughs> Joseph was able to grab onto the fence post and hold on for dear life because the fly was very strong. He was barely able to tie the rope around the fence post. Oh, there. As the fly was trying to fly away, the fence was too strong. He had captured this giant fly. Woohoo! Just then, a whole bunch of the team members from HQ arrived in Joseph's backyard. Holy smokes, Joseph. You weren't kidding about a giant fly, but great job catching him before he got away. That could have been a huge disaster. Yeah, I know, said Joseph, as he was helping Mr. Wilson off the ground and brush off all the dirt and grass that were all over him from rolling on the ground and being tackled by a giant fly. Mr. Wilson, are you okay? Oh, dear. Oh, I don't know what in the world just happened, but did I almost get eaten by a giant fly? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, yes. I'm so sorry, Mr. Wilson, said Joseph. Wow, great job, Joseph. You not only saved Mr. Wilson from that giant fly, but... Now our spy team has a Magna Hoop 2.0. That is going to be really important in stopping Dr. Stinky Breath. I'm not exactly sure how. Having a hoop on hand that can, you know, turn a small cupcake into a giant refrigerator exploding cupcake. That's definitely good to have. The end. Great job, you listened all the way to the end, and you know what time it is, it's time for Kid Shoutouts. I want to say to Pranav from Rhode Island, Elo and Oren from South Africa, Alice and Violet from Minnesota, Felix and Finn from Shanghai, China, Claire from Vancouver, BC, Dixon from Ontario, Brayden and Everett from Columbus, Ohio, and Naisha from Delhi. I'm so glad that you're all in the Kid Short Stories family and on our spy team. We could not stop Dr. Stinky Breath and his crew without you, my friends. Well, you have a super duper day. <laughs> I'll see you later. Bye.